Hey everyone, today we are looking at the story of Maud Allen, a gifted and talented musician and dancer whose life was filled with shame and disgrace as everyone associated Maud with her killer brother. But before we get into his crimes and how it nearly ruined Maud's life, let's go back to the beginning. Maud Allen was born as Eula Maud Allen Durant in the city of Toronto in Canada on the 27th of August 1873. Her parents were William Allen Durant and Isabella Durant. Maud had an older brother Theodore who was born in 1871 and would play a prominent role in her early adult years. As a child Maud emerged as a talented musician even before she reached her teenage years learning to play the piano from Miss Lichtenstein in Toronto. In 1884, when she was 11 years old, Maud's father had left British Canada entirely to head for California in the United States, a booming state off the back of the gold rush of the 1850s and the oil rush which followed from the 1870s onwards. Three years later, in 1887, now that he had established himself with a house and a job in San Francisco, William Durant sent for his family to come and join him in the US, and so Maud, her mother and brother left Canada. In California, Maud continued to learn and play the piano. She excelled at it, playing for some of San Francisco's leading families, including Adolf Sutro, a German-American philanthropist who served as mayor of the city in the mid-1890s. He might also have been Maud's grandfather, as her mother Isabella had been adopted, and the family seems to have come into some unexplained money in the 1890s after connecting with Sutro. By that time, Maud's musical talent was well recognised enough by her tutors that one of them, Eugene Bonelli of the San Francisco Grand Academy of Music, urged her to travel to Germany, the leading country for classical music in the late 19th and early 20th centuries. This she duly did leaving for Europe early in 1895, when she was 22 years old. The plan had been for her mother and brother to join her there once Theodore, who was training to become a doctor, had completed his medical studies. But tragedy struck the family just weeks after Maud left for Europe. On the 14th of April 1895, Maud's brother Theodore was apprehended for two heinous crimes that had been committed at San Francisco's Emmanuel Baptist Church. Well, he was a prime suspect in the murder of Blanche Lamont and Minnie Williams, two young women who were part of the church's congregation. He maintained his innocence during the ensuing trial in September 1895, but he was eventually found guilty of first-degree murder and sentenced to death. He was hanged at San Quentin Prison in January 1898. As Maud was still living in Berlin, she was unable to say a final farewell to her brother. She always maintained he was innocent, and blamed herself for what had happened, believing things would have been different if she never left home. As you might expect, the death stayed with her for many years. Hey, just a quick side note. If you want to check out the life of Theodore Durant after this video, be sure to check out the video by Briefcase. It's an excellent video. Links in the description. Maud was not deterred by the shame which her brother's crimes, trial and conviction had brought on her family. Instead, it seems to have made her more motivated than ever to succeed, and she was now determined to become an acclaimed pianist. It seems like her hard work was paying off as in the summer of 1901, she finally gained entry into the school of the famed Italian pianist Ferruccio Bussoni, located in Weimar. She had also begun going by the name Maud Allen during these years, likely out of concern that using the Durant's name would continue to link her to her brother and the murders. In Weimar, things were to change for Maud in ways which she cannot have expected. Here, surrounded by some of the most talented musicians in the world, she appears to have been phased by the realisation of what level of accomplishment she would have to reach to succeed as a European pianist. But Busoni had another idea. Shortly after her arrival in Weimar, Maud was involved in a dance performance at the Academy, one which led to Busoni advising her to abandon her ambitions to become a pianist 
and instead focus on dancing. He introduced her to Marcel Remy, who became her agent and manager. With this new direction and the advice of Remy, Maud soon reinvented herself to capitalise on both her good looks and her musicality. She now aimed to become an expressionist dancer, an art form which was very much in its infancy in Europe in the 1900s. Ellen quickly adapted to it, making her stage debut in Vienna in the winter of 1903, and quickly moving on to tour numerous major European cities such as Brussels, Berlin and Cologne over the next several years. During these performances, she combined her new pursuit with her love of classical music, dancing to Beethoven, Bach, Chopin and Schubert. Maud Allen is primarily known today for the Dance of the Seven Veils, a performance piece which brought her to international attention in the 1900s and 1910s. The inspiration for this came to her when watching a rendition of Oscar Wilde's Salome in Vienna in 1906. The play is a one-act tragedy, which Wilde had written in 1891 based on the tale of Salome, the stepdaughter of Herod Antipas, who ruled Judea in the early 1st century AD. According to the tale, Salome had convinced Herod to bring her the head of John the Baptist, a religious leader who was creating quite a stir in Judea at the time, in return for dancing for him. Herod, overcome with lust, agrees to do so. Wilde's play necessarily involved a dance sequence. Having seen the play, Maud began working on a version of the erotically charged dance. This dance of Salome which Alan performed is often known as the Dance of the Seven Veils. Alan was performing the Dance of the Seven Veils by 1907. Reviews of her performance were unenthusiastic, but Alan's rendition was different to most others, as she danced largely naked, covered only by jewellery and some see-through bits of silken veils. Moreover, she gained immense notoriety in 1908 when she travelled to London to perform the dance at the Palace Theatre in the West End, a highly controversial move, as the dance of the Seven Veils had been banned in Britain years before, after Wilde's arrest, trial and conviction for indecency under the laws of the time. Yet, Alan was not prevented from performing. In the end, she remained in London for 18 months, during which she performed the dance over 250 times. By the time her London residency ended, Alan had acquired international fame. She would relocate to London and live there for most of the next 30 years, but during the 1910s, she also set off on a world tour, performing in cities like New York, Chicago, Philadelphia, Kansas, San Francisco, and Los Angeles in the United States, followed by a tour of South Africa and parts of Asia, where she played Cape Town, Calcutta, and many other cities. On the back of these, she also carved out a small position in the developing motion picture industry out in Hollywood, appearing in The Rug Maker's Daughter in 1915, in which she also performed a version of the dance. Alan's sexuality was a source of continuous speculation during her own lifetime, and has been ever since as well. We do know that in the mid-1900s, she was involved in an affair with Fruccio Busoni, the director of the Music Academy in Weimar, who had encouraged her to shift from the piano to dancing. However, she would never marry, and there were no sustained heterosexual relationships to speak of in her later years. It is consequently assumed that Alan was actually bisexual, with a greater preference for female relationships. This would certainly tie in with the recorded evidence for her many years in London. Around 1910, she became involved in an affair with Margot Asquith, the wife of the Liberal Prime Minister of Britain, Herbert Asquith. Asquith even began paying for Alan's apartment next to Regent's Park, an arrangement which would last for the better part of 20 years. In 1928, Herbert Asquith died, leaving his wife almost penniless, despite his successful political career. Margot consequently stopped paying for Maud's apartment, which led to the end of their relationship and the beginning of a new affair between Alan 
and her secretary, Werner Aldrich. Eventually, Aldrich moved into the apartment at Regent's Park and lived there for 10 years, but it was a controlling relationship in which Alan, who was 20 years older than Aldrich, abused her younger partner emotionally and financially. When it ended many years later, Maud threatened to expose Aldrich's homosexuality. Alan's sexuality was central to the most infamous part of her lifetime in the late 1910s and early 1920s. In 1918, towards the end of the First World War, she returned to London to take up the lead role in the new production of Salome, which was being produced by the theatre director Jack Green. Green's production was controversial, as a British law had been issued some years earlier, which banned biblical characters such as John the Baptist from being depicted on stage. Consequently, Green circumvented the ban by making this an application-only viewing, which was not seemingly open to the public. In doing so, he could claim that the play was actually just a performance, in front of a private gathering. The play sparked controversy, and in turn led to a religiously inclined member of parliament by the name of Noel Pemberton Billing to publish an article in his own journal, Vigilante. In this, Billing accused Allen of being a lesbian, something which was frowned upon in British society at the time, but which was not illegal. Billing also suggested, in a paranoid vein, that many of those who were applying to see Green's play were homosexual, and were possibly being blackmailed by the German government, with whom Britain was still at war. Maud responded by suing Billing for libel. The case, when it came to the trial, became something of a sensation in the British newspapers, but it ended badly for Allen. Billing claimed Allen was insane, claiming it was hereditary, and highlighted elements of her brother's murder trial and execution as proof. Also, the judge essentially ignored the suit, and instead focused on the fact that Wilde's play, which was effectively banned in London, was being performed in the city at all. In the end, Maud lost her suit, and the case created immensely bad publicity for her. It seriously damaged her career in Britain in particular, but also many other countries, and this couldn't come at a worse time, as she had very bad spending habits and had very little savings put aside from all her years of work. Despite the public scandal which went along with the libel trial, Maud did not retreat from public life in its aftermath, but continued to dance throughout the 1920s and 1930s. She also expanded her work as an actress. For instance, in 1932 she appeared in The Miracle, directed by Max Reinhardt, one of the most prominent German-language theatre directors of the first half of the 20th century. Her dancing continued through these years, that is until 1936, when at 62 years of age, she gave her last performance at the Redlands Bowl in California. Maud never had any children, and with the death of her mother in 1930, her father having died in 1917, she was increasingly isolated in the world. Her mother had been a travelling companion for many years, and had also lived with Maud for some time at her home in Regent's Park in London. Thus, her death was a major blow to Maud. Nevertheless, she continued to reside in London until the early 1940s, when another difficulty struck her as her home was bombed as a result of the German Blitz of London during the Second World War. Increasingly impoverished, Maud left for the United States in 1943 and settled in California. There, she largely lived on the generosity of old friends, for despite having once earned as much as £500 per week in her heyday, Alan was broke by the 1940s. She also worked for a time with the McDonald Aircraft Corporation in their offices in Santa Monica. When she died in Los Angeles in 1956, at the age of 83 in a nursing home, she was effectively a pauper, but the memory of her times as a leading protagonist of the Dance of the Seven Veils lives on today. Thank you so much everyone for watching this video on Maud Allen, I hope you found it interesting. Let me know what you thought of her life down below in the comments, and if you have any suggestions, be sure to also leave them down below in the comments. If you're interested in the case of Theodore Durant, be sure to check out Briefcase's video, 
And if you have any suggestions, also be sure to leave them down below in the comments. Anyway, that's all from me, so I'll see all of you in the next Forgotten Life. Thanks.